Hello again, Gary Stearman, along with Bob Ulrich. And let's start with some good news right up front. Bob has something to share with you today that we've been talking about now on the last few updates. Bob, it's really good news. Well, it's uh, spectacular news, and uh, we've kind of given a little teaser on our Facebook page about it. But today is our 60th day officially in ministry. 60 days. Yeah. It's been two months, and it seems like so much longer. Well, we've gotten a lot done in 60 days. Well, with uh, your help and with the Lord's help, we have gotten a, a tremendous amount of things done. Uh, we have a temporary place to shoot our television program. Uh, we have a website, and I'm sure you've seen the new website by now, which includes a new online bookstore. Orders are coming in, which is something that's really exciting around the house right now. We're getting ready to move into the offices. We'll be doing all of our shipping there probably before the end of this week. We have a new phone system. We have internet at our offices. Uh, we have a lot of things that have been accomplished in a really short period of time. And really, we're, we're thanking the Lord. We're grateful for that. We're here to thank you as well because you've made this all possible. Now, I want Gary to tell you the really good news. What is it? Well, the really good news is that, as you know, uh, we, we have been uh, praying uh, about a new studio. And, of course, a new studio requires new equipment. You'd be amazed at the list uh, of items that it takes for a, uh, a video studio. Of course, you have to have the cameras. You have to have the tripods. You have to have the lights. You have to have some place for the cameras to send their signals. You have to be able to record signals. And, and, and later on, you have to be able to edit the video. And the list goes on and on. And, Bob, it can be rather daunting to think about all the things you have to buy. Well, I, what can I say? Thank you all for providing for us uh, the means necessary to purchase all that equipment. And Bob, that equipment is on its way to us even as we speak somewhere aboard an 18-wheeler bound for Oklahoma City. And all we can say is praise the Lord and thank you so much for your help. Well, the best part is it's paid in full. Uh, no debt. We have paid cash thanks to your generosity for literally everything we need to outfit our television studio. Three high-definition television studio cameras are on, our, on their way here from New York City to Oklahoma City right now, and we're thanking the Lord for that. We are indeed. And what this means is this is one step closer to a video studio and the step after that is getting into full-time broadcasting, which is really the desire of our hearts. Because, Bob, there is so much to talk about. I don't know if you've been watching the news, but prophetic events are, are coming in such serial, rapid serial order that they're almost difficult to keep track of. Things that you can read about in the Bible, and we're going to be talking in a moment about one of those things and about uh, a good way for you to track some of those events. But Bob, even as we speak, today, for example, in Israel, there was an attack uh, on a synagogue, a vicious attack by Islamic uh, extremists in, in which uh, they came in with meat cleavers. Uh, they killed some people. In fact, they killed four in, in that synagogue. Two Palestinian cousins, according to the My Way News Service, uh, dateline November 18th, uh, armed with meat cleavers and a gun, stormed a Jerusalem synagogue during Monday mor morning prayers on Tuesday, uh, killing four people in the city's bloodiest attack in years. Police killed the attackers in a shootout. But uh, eyewitness accounts uh, uh, talk about these, uh, these extremists coming in and screaming Allahu Akbar, the familiar cry of extremism, uh, which Avi Lipkin tells us means Allah is the greatest. Uh, and that's the cry on their lips as they kill Jews. And this is very sad to me. And yet, Bob, uh, the, all this was prophesied for the latter days. And we're going to talk here now for the next few moments about a way of studying Bible prophecy that will give you insight into news uh, events, news releases, just like the one uh, I've read to you. And, and Bob's holding a book there uh, that was uh, uh, produced by Ed Heinsohn, Tim LaHaye, and it's an amazing book. And you've got that open 
to a prophecy, uh, Bob, or the explanation of a prophecy that really fits what's going on in Israel right now? Well, I do. In fact, this has been one of my favorite books forever and ever. Uh, it's called Exploring Bible Prophecy, but the really key part is the subtitle. It says, From Genesis to Revelation, Clarifying the Meaning of Every Prophetic Passage. Now, we get letters and emails from people all the time wondering, how did you get so much knowledge, Gary? Where did you learn all these things? And I always say to people from 40 or 50 years of studying the Bible, from pastoring a, a, a local church here in Oklahoma City. But, you know, if you want to get a good start on really learning the prophecies of the Bible, this book to me is something that every single student of prophecy should have in their library. In fact, I've started reading this myself, starting at Genesis. You literally read about every single prophecy in the Bible. It's the most outrageous thing ever published. It's 560 pages long. It's completely, totally comprehensive. This morning I was looking at a passage, and I, I've been leafing through the book a little bit, kind of to see the LaHaye Heinsohn commentary on certain things. And I came across a passage that I know you've written about from Hosea before. Mm -hmm. And as we watch these things happen in Jerusalem, I guess we really shouldn't be surprised because these things have been prophesied. But, you know, God speaks to Hosea at the end of the fifth chapter. And, and it says here in the commentary, it's titled, Prerequisites of the Second Coming. And, and their commentary says in, in uh, Hosea 5, 1 to 14, Hosea spells out a broad sweep of prophecy that has now been fulfilled. In this prophecy, sometimes the focus is on Judah, sometimes on Israel, sometimes on both. The overview includes what was fulfill, uh, fulfilled through the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, and the events of 70 AD. God, who does all the speaking throughout chapter 5 of Hosea, concludes by saying in verse 15, I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Mm -hmm. Now, you've written about this before. I have, and pretty much reflect what Ed and Tim have to say. Uh, and he talks about the presuppositions necessary to understand this prophecy. Uh, God states, they say, he's going to go back to his place, which is heaven. Uh, before God can go back to heaven, he must first leave it and then return to it. And, and he asks the question, very logical question, when did he leave heaven? Ah, good question. Uh, we know the answer. And we know the answer. It's when he came to earth uh, in the incarnation uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he returned to heaven again when he was resurrected on the third day after his crucifixion. All very carefully planned, but, and I'm going to lift up my trusty Bible here, uh, Hosea's prophecy uh, talks about the Lord as a lion, and of course he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He says, I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to uh, my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. Affliction. This is the latter-day condition of regathered Israel, affliction. The Hebrew word is patsar, which uh, means great uh, heart-wrenching difficulty. The same word appears in the New Testament, Matthew 24, a translation out of the Greek, thlipsis, which is sometimes translated as tribulation. It's trouble. It's, it's anguish. And this prophecy in Hosea chapters 5 and 6 is commented upon by Ed and Tim. And it'll give you uh, an opportunity to, to fit the little building blocks of Bible prophecy together to make sense in the light of what's happening in today's world. Bob, the thing about uh, this book, Exploring Bible Prophecy from Genesis to Revelation, is that it's systematic. It starts at Genesis, <coughs> goes to Revelation. And it takes each major prophecy in very, very plain, simple English and explains how they fit together. I don't know of another book quite like it. Well, you've made a key point earlier. It's a book that teaches premillennial theology. It does. It's a book based on the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which is kind of the foundation for what we teach here at Prophecy Watchers. Wouldn't you agree? 
I would agree. And Bob, the thing about this book is you don't have to be a uh, long-studied Bible scholar with years and years of experience to understand exactly what it says. Uh, what I like about it is you don't have to read an entire chapter. You can just read one passage at a time. You can use it as a devotional. You can use it in a Bible study. You can teach your family about Bible prophecy through one simple book that is totally and completely comprehensive. Now you can find this in our bookstore. It's 1995. Uh, our online bookstore is now officially up and running. There are over a hundred products in the bookstore. There are another couple of hundred that as quickly as I can write the descriptions and assign the prices and the product codes, there'll be a lot more than that. Eventually my goal is to have 500 really high quality premillennial products in that bookstore. You can go to prophecywatchers.com. You can click on the little bookstore ad. Uh, go up to the top of the menu bar and scroll down bookstore, search for books, search for DVDs, it's all there for you. And before I forget, this offer still stands for donation of any amount to the Prophecy Watchers to help us continue the startup and the growth of our ministry. We're going to send you a free copy of Gary's book, Time Travelers of the Bible. Donation of any amount. It's in reprint right now. It's going to be about six weeks before we have these back in stock. But uh, go to the bookstore, make a donation, and uh, help us get this ministry even further off the ground. And now that we have all that studio equipment coming our way, next step, a studio. And we've got a lot to share on that score. Bob, we've run out of time. But uh, let me just tell you that we're ever so grateful for all of our friends out there, uh, Prophecy Watchers supporters. When we get our feet on the ground and get running, it's going to be great. Thank you so much, and may the Lord bless you all. I'm Gary Stearman, along with Bob Ulrich, saying keep watching, everybody.